you wrote this book, uh, Reflecting Grace, mm -hmm. How One Woman Found Life on a Quest to Outrun Her Eating Disorder. Uh, I'm sure you're, you know, this is, this is your life story, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. I haven't read it yet. It's um, actually a compilation of poetry Ooh. that I put together. Um, I apologize. No, I, poetry is great. Go ahead. I, um, I'm, I found early on that that is what assisted me mm. in finding my voice. Mm. Yes. And so now this is actually, um, I moved quite a bit searching mm -hmm. for my voice. Right. And this is a lot of uh, the words that I put to my experiences. And I'm actually in this the midst of writing my second book right now, which is more soul focused. This is more in it. Um, and now I'm actually going um, through the healing process of letting all of that go wow. and stepping forward into the truth of who I am. It takes a lot of courage to, to oh, find yeah. your voice. Mm -hmm. oh, it yeah. does. I agree. Now, how long ago uh, did you write this book? That was published in 2005. 2005, so it's recent, really. It is, yes. Well, this is great, and it's <coughs> dedicated to Grandpa. Yes. <coughs> and all the special angels in, in my life, like that, uh, who continue to inspire me uh, to be true example of my faith. Oh, this is wonderful. You got their names, Uncle Tom, Uncle mm -hmm. Ed. This is great, Uncle Mike. Oh, God. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh this is great. This is good. So this is based around you losing weight. That it Was that the impetus or? Well, um, the focus around it is me as a person, mm -hmm. um, being authentic. Okay. And um, each, each chapter is different. One's on family, one's on service, one's on recovery, because it's not just one thing. It's everything. Mm -hmm. right. And um, in it, my focus was I wanted to change the world. I wanted to save the world. Mm -hmm. right. And I figured the more I did, the, more, the better I felt about me. Right. Yes. And so the better I felt about me, somehow the eating disorder would go away. Mm -hmm. It never did. Not until mm -hmm. I came to a place of loving myself right. and healing that part that I'm okay just as I am. Right. Yes, and that's so how, important. How, I'm sorry. No, I was because say that's how can you love somebody else if you can't even love yourself? Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's funny because I met uh, <clears throat> a huge celebrity back in the early '90s, and he looked at me, and I had <clears throat> cowboy boots on at that time. I, I would wear them, and he looked at me, and <clears throat> he was already getting close to 60, and he was very prominent, very, very successful. And he says, "What's with the cowboy boots? I mean, aren't you from New York?" You know, I'm saying, yeah. Um, he says, they can't be comfortable. I said, yeah. He says, so is fashion? I said, I like the way they look with these, with the jeans and so forth. I said, mm -hmm. okay. And, of course, that lit a light bulb in my head that he's judging me by my boots. But he mm -hmm. says, what's uh, with the other person inside you? Why can't you let go? <laughs> Ooh. And I said, wow, wow. Herb, you, you're really touching a, an interesting point. He says, yeah. you got another little person in there. You know, at least 70, 100 pounds. I don't know, you know how heavy you are. Well, but and that person was holding on to the boots? I, no, no, that was a whole different. Oh, the boots okay. were just, he was looking at me because he liked what I did. I came to his house, Herb Albert. Yeah, right. And he liked the fact that his wife and him have embraced my my whole uh, premise of how to create a healthy environment and yes. taking out the toxins. And he wants to live forever, of course, being so successful, you have everything going. So yes. why not try to go as long as you can in a healthy environment? And when he said that, it, it just hit home base because I've heard that also through um, um, some other folks that had some eating uh, issues. And it's a comfort level. And I hear more and more when people talk about food supplementing uh, another area mainly when you're when you become a senior citizen it's like there's no more sex so it's like food you know <laughs> food food I seen it uh, firsthand at a, at a um, I think I mentioned this at a cruise mm -hmm. where I thought it was a younger crowd and I found out it was all geriatric 
Oh. They were senior citizens, and I said, oh. what am I doing with these white hair, blue, white? Oh. And I called my agent, and I said, what did you do? She said, no, there's supposed to be 30s and 40s there. I said, there's nobody younger oh. than 75 on this oh. ship. So you were real popular then. You were oh, young I stud. wouldn't say I was popular. The food was popular. Four o'clock when the bell whistled. I mean, they were in their wheelchairs. You know, and they were I, I, think, I would think, and I, I, um, not to change the subject, but thinking about you know disorders, that the most difficult one would be you know, an eating disorder. Because think about it. Okay, alcohol. We don't need alcohol, mm -hmm. you know. That's a program. Somebody, Somebody has program. Pills, program. unless you're in pain, you you can you know live without that. But food, we have to eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to eat to sustain ourselves to be healthy. Yeah. Mary, did you? And if it, if you can share it, or, or sure. Did you find out the root of your issue? Well, the core of anything is loving who I am. Right. You know, and um, actually, I'm in the process of working on my master's in spiritual psychology, Great. which has Ooh. really <laughs> blessed me oh, wow. with the opportunity to heal because um, I'm going to the University of Santa Monica in Santa Monica, and um, the folks there, the chancellors, John Roger and Ron and Mary Holnick, are the two main folks who, who run it. And the, the whole basis is that we are divine beings having a human experience. And by going there, they'll graduate this August. It's like walking into a room filled with the light of God. Mm. It's almost like looking into the eyes of God when I walk into class. Mm. I have class once a month for a full weekend. And that's how I've come to really heal it. It was my intention going into this master's program. I was going to catapult myself into recovery. And I came to realize it's not about recovery because nothing's broken. Right. It's about healing, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it's understanding that I am a divine being, having yes. a human experience, right. and in that is the healing, and that yes. the eating disorder is not something I need to kill, right. because it is ultimately a part of me. Mm -hmm. I just need to heal it and integrate it so I can be whole. Mm -hmm.